Hi, my name is Carla de Guzman. I'm a romance writer from the Philippines and this is my dog. Yes, my dog. My dog! So just when you thought this video was just going to be me cuddling kimchi the entire time and talking about something, actually, I'm going to talk about my February reads for this year. Okay, we're gonna do that. We're gonna talk about it and put on some makeup because what else are you gonna have a YouTube channel for if not to put on makeup on screen? So the first book I read for Feb was Any Old Diamonds by KJ Charles. And, you know, one would think I would not be interested in an in MM historical fiction heist romance. I was super into it. Like the moment, the moment Chachik posted it on, I think it was Twitter, I, I saw it and I was like, oh my God, I had no idea that KJ Charles was writing it. I had no idea that this is going to be released. So um, I picked up a copy and I read it and good Lord, my goodness gracious, it was so good. So I'm just going to take a shade Caramello on a fluffy blender brush. So after any old diamonds, I, um, I thought, oh yeah, okay, great. Feb's gonna be a great reading month. So I went right into A Taste of Pleasure by Chloe Blake. Um, I've seen this book recommended a lot on on um, on Twitter, and I trust book Twitter a lot, so I picked it up, um, and I ended up not liking it. Um, it has a lot to do with the cover, and you know, you say, they say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but I mean, that cover was gorgeous, but the main character of Chloe Blake's book is size 16. Uh, she's a plus size character. And yeah, that girl was not plus sized. Maybe I wouldn't mind too much if if um if the main character's insecurities didn't stem from the fact that she's plus sized. I actually stopped reading A Taste of Pleasure because it it was this bit where she was on the phone with her mom and her mom was kind of berating her for being fat. And uh, uh it just kind of made me uncomfortable. Okay, then to just to deepen out those up those corners, I put in some cafecito on the you know outer corners of my eye and just kind of spreading it out with this fluffy brush. I had a chance to borrow my friend Chatik's copy of Fence Volume 2. <gasps> I love Fence. I love Fence. Um there is a there was like a page where we have a baby Seiji. Oh my god, his little baby belly and those cheeks. <laughs> oh, so cute. And I'm so affected by it because okay, this may just be the romance reader in me, but I 100% know who is going to end up with who and it just I'm so excited. I'm so excited for it to finally actually happen. And people are like, "Oh, it's queer baiting because you know, they're actually not together." But I can see it. I can super see Honestly, when I was reading volume two, I was like squealing by myself in the cafe. I was going like, eh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. So that's that's how much I liked it. So after Fence, I managed to borrow a copy of um, Bingo Love by T. Franklin. And um, it's not a romance. Okay, spoilers if you haven't read Bingo Love, just skip skip to the next thing. I don't I don't like reading romances where you, you made me go through all of that just to tell me that they died? Why? What was the point? Like, I don't... I don't understand that. And people are like, oh, it's a romance. It's not. It's it's not. And I, I understand that it's important that we have this kind of representation. And I love that we have, the, we have a book where two, uh, where two grandmas fall in love over bingo. But please don't tell me that something is a romance when it's not. I actually picked up a copy of Nimona from Fully Book in the Philippines, which we actually had Nimona in the Philippines, but we do. So um, my thing with Nimona is I loved it. I thought, okay, it's actually the way I feel about Nimona is exactly the way, is exactly the plot of the book. It's, it's like, it's not what you think it is. It's, um... Okay, like in Swan Princess, when, when, when the guy dies, when the king dies and then he's clutching Prince Derek's shoulders, he's like, it's not what it seems, Derek. It's not what it seems. This is exactly what this book is for me. 
it was so unexpected i loved it so much now um we have pretty much our base set up so i'm just gonna get um the celia shade from the alamar palette on um on a round brush to sort of pack in that shimmery shade in the middle everyone started started crawling over mina <laughs> because she got this copy of check please and um she was doing this live tweeting thing and just based on the live tweets people were like oh i need to borrow that i need to borrow that and we we're very into um book lending and romance class so mina brought it for um for one of our um usual hangouts and i i got to read check please and oh my god it's so precious bitty is so precious i just want to put him in my pocket and then he'll come out every once in a while with a big good it was that kind of feel good killing sort of book and if there's another volume coming out i need to know like right away right away because i need to know i need to know what happens to bitty um mostly because i have a lot of anticipated reads for april 2019 um mina vs garis kiss and cry is coming out really soon so i ordered it i pre-ordered it so, and it's coming i'm really excited for that prince on paper is coming out soonish also i think april or may so i'm excited for that lucy parker is coming out with the austin playbook this april as well and my friends who have already read it are like girl you're gonna love it so i'm like okay yes i believe that the Devil's Daughter by Lisa Claypass is already out. I'm just basically waiting in line for it. So basically, a lot of anticipated reads this April, which kind of makes my expectations for my current reads a little higher, which is kind of unfair, but Don Lanuza has another book coming out. She has a new romance book coming out called Stay a Little Longer, coming out this May, I believe. So there's that and because it's april you just know romance class writers who have been secretly working on their books for a while are going to release their new thing i am just gonna take la costa la costa from the alamar palette super light dusting just put it on the apples of my cheeks so i thought to myself okay while we're waiting for march to start um Let's go back into audiobooks. This was exactly when Rebecca Weatherspoon released an audiobook version of Rafe. <gasps> oh my god. Okay, first of all, we already have confirmation that Rafe is actually pronounced Rafe and not Raf, as some of us thought. Listening to the audio version, you realize that Rebecca wrote a lot of Rafe's voice into the book, into his character. Um, I feel like Rafe's voice is as important as his beard, his tattoos, his his size. And the person narrating is just so good at it. Oh my god, and I, I completely forgot to talk about this book that I'm currently reading because I've been distracted by Rafe. Um, but right now, I am reading The Art of Forgery by, what's his name, Noah Charney. Um, I forgot to mention it because it's a nonfiction book. In the intro of the book, the author makes a point to say that there are no, to categorically, categorically say that there are no women forgers in recorded history. And I found that just a little bit offensive. It's like the author is saying, I'm not even gonna bother like looking for women forgers in history because there are none. There are none. Just accept it. There are none there. And here's my thing. It becomes obvious at some point in the book that all of these art forgers, um, they go on to have great careers. Sort of feels unfair um, now that I just found out that there are no female forgers in history. So, so every time I read this book, it just kind of gets me really annoyed because I keep thinking about... I keep imagining like... There's a little girl out there who wants to be a forger someday. And this book literally just told her that she doesn't exist. I don't know. So I have right now on my Kindle, Bollywood and the Beast by Suleika Snyder. And I also got an advanced reader's copy of My Fair Millennial by El, El Hume. Eli Humi? Eli Humi? L L Hume. So um yeah, I'm looking I'm reading, I'm going to read that after Rafe. Everything after Rafe, guys. If you're interested in following me on Instagram or on Twitter, my name for both is at Carla K. De Guzman. 
I am also Carla de Guzman if you look for me on Amazon and on Smashwords. I upload videos for YouTube every Wednesday so if you're interested in keeping up with makeup with what I'm doing here um, just click on the subscribe button. Um, that's it for me. I will see you next week. Bye! Kiss today, goodbye, and point me towards tomorrow. What I did for.